Majestic peaks soared around me in views so spectacular that earlier I'd been moved to tears of gratitude and awe. I felt tears in my eyes again, but these were from exhaustion. At 13,000 feet, with 1,000 feet yet to climb before shelter, my body refused to move another step as I struggled to garner stamina. There on the path to Annapurna Base Camp, the first of several dozen treks in the Himalayas and Andes, I began to realize the way I breathed determined how I moved on a mountain, and more importantly, how I moved through life. Breath? Growing up, I never gave a thought to my breath. Knowing what I know now, I'm sure my childhood and early life would have been more empowered, healthier, and happier if I had. Fortunately, in my early teens, I discovered yoga from a book. I learned to coordinate my breath with movements, a good start, making me at least aware I was breathing and giving me slight glimpses into the gifts of presence. That breath practice begins to bestow. It was that first trek though in Nepal that catapulted me to new heights of awareness of breath's potential. The quest to learn more guided me to many and varied teachers near and far. I studied Qigong, Tai Chi, meditation, respiratory science, and breathing for healing. I became a mindfulness-based stress reduction MBSR instructor. And first and foremost, I practiced yoga. Originally, I thought yoga was only asanas, physical postures. I realized soon that it is an actual science of life of how to attain optimum well-being in life. Essential to this goal is pranayama, the yogic science of breath. The yearning to absorb all I could led me around the world to study with amazing teachers and attain varieties of certifications. My travels were aided by a 13-year airline career, which became a training ground to test techniques for coping with high stresses, not the high stresses of a flight crew, rather those of a sedentary reservations agent. And then, and always on my feet, airport agent. Anyone involved in customer service, phone work or travel understands. It's both your own and other stresses, monotony, time concerns, computer problems, unforeseen issues, like the elderly gentleman who flew out of South Africa, destined for Aberdeen, Scotland, arriving instead in Aberdeen, South Dakota, <laughs> thousands of miles out of the way. What to do? Breathe. <laughs> During my years with the airlines, I experienced three problematic mergers. I watched colleagues succumb to stress with nervous breakdowns, eating disorders, and other issues. I learned I needed to manage my own nervous system to curtail the stress responses of others. I discovered more layers of the power of breath. Yoga teacher and activist Sean Korn urges, breath is everything. Yoga will change your body, but the breath will change your life. At age 36, I left the airlines to follow my fervor for yoga and wellness while earning a master's degree in therapeutic counseling, emphasizing breath. Nurturing continued passion for travel, I often journeyed alone or took others on expeditions and retreats that tested psychophysical and spiritual resilience. I witnessed how breath practices empowered each of us in hairy situations to keep calm and carry on. From those experiences, my vision crystallized. I became passionate about sharing breath with everyone, not just those interested in trekking, yoga, or meditation, everyone. No matter one's strength, flexibility, 
age, gender, race, religion, politics, occupation, or location, we can all benefit immensely from better breathing. In 2000, I met my life partner, George, a psychologist who introduced me to work with humanitarian organizations. In contrast to my discovery of breath awareness and practices through yoga and meditation, George was drawn through research, science, and realizations that implementing this knowledge can change individuals, groups, organizations, and systems. Our paths of time-honored wisdom in modern science converged in the development of breath literacy for enhanced health and well-being, physically and psychologically. As founding director of Breathe the Change LLC and co-founder of the nonprofit Breath Logic, my greatest fulfillment has been witnessing people of so many ages and backgrounds find empowerment and sanctuary inside themselves because of breath. I have taught and presented in wellness and community centers, hospitals, clinics, corporations, schools, universities, and at conferences about arts and healthcare, brain injury, cancer, conflict resolution, education, grief, kindness, leadership, and holistic nursing, among others. By living and sharing with diverse populations on five continents, George and I have found that people everywhere respond to learning and utilizing the power tools in their breath. Working with one's breath is a profound practice of self-love and kindness inside out that helps heal the places deep inside us where we don't feel safe. Breath nourishes, nurtures, and changes us on a cellular level. Of course, breath is life. So as teacher and author Rashad Field advises, breathe for God's sake. The aim of this book is for you to want to do just that. <laughs>